The accelerating period of change that small and medium-sized businesses are experiencing means that strong support from their banks is vital. To have the most impact, banks need to focus on the real needs of SMEs, get the basics right, transform their credit operations and become more flexible. The Multinational Professional Services Network, EY, has published a paper in which the insights from more than 5,000 SMEs across Europe are outlined. They found banks have an opportunity to revolutionise their relationship with SMEs by leveraging and developing the SME ecosystem via new platform models. Well, to examine this in more detail, we are joined by Filippo Mastor Pietro. Now, he's the EMEIA Financial Services Banking Transformation Leader, and Anita Kimber. She is the EMEIA Business Transformation Leader at AEY. Look, it's very good to see both of you, so thank you so much for joining us. But, Filippo, let me start first with you, because, look, we know that the pandemic has had a pretty deep impact on SMEs, but from what they were telling you, what were some of the biggest issues that they faced? Can you describe that for us? Sure. First of all, thank you for, for inviting us. It's a big pleasure. Yes, our survey is telling us that basically 75% of SMEs globally have been impacted negatively by the pandemic. And of course, this percentage can change across geographies. If we take, for example, Italy, this percentage uh, goes up to 90%. If we go to Hong Kong, this percentage goes down to 50%. So uh, it depends really on the areas, on the geographies, but also the industries that have been impacted uh, uh, differently uh, according to the different supply chains uh, they were working with. So the key issues we have seen uh, as EY hitting the, the, uh, the SMEs uh, are basically uh, working with the local restrictions, working remotely with the clients, working remotely with employees, uh, keeping brand reputation uh, at the right pace, uh, and most importantly, be able to have the right funding uh, to support their needs. Now, fortunately, what we see uh, and what we're living commonly is uh, a new phase of rebound, of launch, that we all hope will be strong and sustainable over time, where SMEs are very keen to rethink their business models towards, of course, e-commerce, online marketplaces, franchising distribution, and subscription-based offerings, all business models that are uh, able to support SMEs to play actively in uh, this new market context. Anita, the impact has been significant, but there has been some help on hand. Many governments have offered support to SMEs during the pandemic. How important has that been? Look, it's been a lifeline. It, it, it's incredible to, to think, you know, who could have imagined that half of SMEs globally would be getting some sort of help from governments. So it's been, it's been absolutely vital. But it's not just governments. SMEs have looked to banks, to financial institutions. A third of them have looked to banks, financial institutions. A third of them have borrowed from friends and family. So they've, they've really accessed a range of support. But, but I think it's the whole thing has highlighted a few points here. SMEs need access to that cash. When they ask for help, they need it quickly. And in the past, you know, we've, we've heard of SMEs waiting three weeks, four weeks, months for access to cash. And that, the pandemic has shifted all of that. In our survey, SMEs told us overwhelmingly that they expect that cash in their accounts within seven days. But that said, you know, even when they do get the cash, the other thing that, that's really striking in there, whatever support they've got, you've got a third of SMEs who are really concerned now about their ability to repay. Now, some of that's not coming through yet because we've had things like payment holidays, um, but, but it, it's a risk in the system right now. Mm. Anita, stay with me on this one, because look, a lot of businesses had to respond in their own way during the pandemic. Many had no choice but to go digital in their activities. Yeah. Do you see that as a trend that's here to stay, one of the lasting legacies? Uh, absolutely. And the, the SMEs in the survey told us that overwhelmingly. I mean, we, we saw it with consumers, didn't we? And we all talked about the fact that consumers uh, downloaded banking apps and, and, and went internet banking. Well, the same is true of SMEs, but really across their supply chain. And, and over half of SMEs right now um, are looking to become even more digital. So 
we call them the um, the introspective SMEs. Not that they're not talking to anybody, but they've they've used the pandemic to reflect, really refine their their business model. So that's the positive side of of this um, injection of support coming into the system. The knock on effect of that, of course, is the more digital they become, the more digital they're expecting services from places like banks, fintechs, those sorts of things. Philippa, uh, we, we talk about knock-on effects. Uh, do you believe SMEs' attitudes towards their banks have changed at all, have shifted at all during the pandemic? And are banks still considered the most trusted financial partner for them? Well, banks are definitely considered as crucial partners for, for SMEs, especially for funding purpose. And our survey is telling us that 73% of SMEs globally uh, declare they are working even with more than fin one financial institution, so more than one bank. What we see, what we observe, is the evolving needs uh, of this particular client. I mean, SMEs are more and more looking outside our trusted advisor, so our partner that can really support on a continuous basis uh, along uh, the business duties of the SMEs. And here, banks, of course, with relationship managers, with branches, can really play this business partner role that SMEs are looking for. But nevertheless, also, SMEs are looking for digital business uh, and financial services and products, uh, even beyond banking, based on a strong and better use of data. And here, uh, we observe an increased appetite uh, for partnerships uh, with new players like fintechs and big techs. And Anita, look, Felipe just mentioned data and within the context of SME banking, we hear a lot about that. But can SMEs genuinely trust banks to handle their data? Data is a very precious commodity. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And, and what I think we saw coming through in the survey is that SMEs are getting increasingly sophisticated about their attitudes towards data. So we were surprised two thirds of SMEs explicitly told us that they would share more data with their banks if they got value in return. So it's that whole value exchange thing. And they're, they're willing to pay for these services. But of course, that all goes with an underlying infrastructure that data needs to be kept safe. So the, 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 the ongoing investment in fraud management, cyber security, that remains, that's critical. And Filippo, it's clearly a very competitive market. So what should SMEs be demanding from their financial service providers? Well, we see at least four key areas of strong demand, among others, where uh, banks and financial service providers can make the difference. One was mentioned before by Anita, so faster credit. So being able to provide credit with a reasonable time to cash. That for SMEs, it means seven days, uh, as we said before. Uh, trusted advisor relationship is another key area uh, where, let's say, the relation can improve a lot between SMEs and, and the bank. So becoming a business partner for SMEs, studying the business, the industry, the supply chain, and be close and continuous contact uh, uh, with the client. Uh, the third area is uh, tailored data services, so to be able to bundle and orchestrate financial products with third-party value-added services based on data in order to capture wider ecosystem needs and support clients within their core businesses. And finally, single integrated platform. So to be able to converge products and services into one single integrated platform that can offer a seamless digital experience to SMEs. Okay, well, look, thank you so much for taking us through that paper. The contents were really fascinating, but sadly, time is our enemy. We have to leave it there. But Filippo Mastro Pietro and Anita Kimber from EY, thank you so much for joining us on Cybos TV and enjoy Cybos 2021. I'm sure we'll see you very soon. Thank you both.